The honorable and noble rival to Tiamat, Bahamut is the platinum dragon darling of paladins, dragonborn, and the draconic faithful everywhere, and has been a major part of the Dungeons & Dragons pantheon all the way back to the first edition. Even if it's only due to a dragon-loving paladin, Bahamut is likely to make an impact on your games. Even if it's only due to a dragon-loving paladin or dragon-loving player in your group, Bahamut is likely to make at least a small impact on your games, so we're going to go over everything you need to know about them in today's episode. Bahamut is the one and only Platinum Dragon. A revered patron of the metallic dragons and any other being on the path to good, in earlier editions Bahamut was just a vassal and a servant to another god of justice, Torm, and Bahamut was labeled as a lesser deity. That whole notion seems to have been left behind, and nowadays Bahamut is a full-fledged god and member of a lot of pantheons, particularly the popular Wildemount setting. As mentioned, Bahamut is the eternal rival of Tiamat, the five-headed evil dragon goddess you may have seen running around before, and is often considered the king of dragons, or at least the king of good dragons. Each campaign setting has a slightly different version of Bahamut, but he's always a powerful draconic deity, devoted to promoting good and stopping evil creatures with limitless empathy who forgoes punishment with forgiveness. He's particularly hated by evil dragons and any followers of the evil dragon queen Tiamat. For obvious reasons. He seems to be free of corruption too, as Bahamut isn't about killing beings in the name of good, and usually goes to great lengths to avoid killing an intelligent creature, even a chromatic dragon which he should be diametrically opposed to. Instead, Bahamut is known for polymorphing enemies into something harmless, talking them down or practically anything else to avoid bloodying his claws with evil. Bahamut's mood isn't perfectly consistent though, and every once in a while he'll smite something that needs a, a good smiting or two. Physically, Bahamut is a massive metallic dragon with a silvery platinum hue. This is his natural form, but he also likes to walk around in the world as a humanoid, usually in the form of an old man that provides wisdom or safe refuge to those who need it. It's usually only when dealing with other dragons or combating evil that he will adopt his form as a huge dragon. Bahamut has a council of seven ancient gold dragons who attend to matters on Bahamut's behalf. In some versions, these gold worms are the reincarnations of noble kings, but in some iterations, they are simply the ancient dragons that Bahamut trusts the most. I kind of prefer the latter, I'm not exactly sure why. Each golden worm passes a challenging and dangerous test set by Bahamut, and to all dragonkind sitting on Bahamut's council is among the most prestigious and greatest honors. This council of worms often acts as a jury regarding evildoers captured by Bahamut's champions. Even if they're all just sitting around a boring council table or something, I just really like that imagery. Bahamut holds a relatively minor position in several pantheons of non-dragons, but he is one of the primary members of the Draconic Pantheon and has many dragon worshippers. Copper dragons, silver dragons, gold worms, and most other metallic dragons worship him, or at least hold him in high regard among their ancient pantheon. The dragonborn race also commonly number among his Draconic faithful. The origins of the Dragonborn race are a bit muddy these days, but some of these Dragonborn still consider Bahamut as the progenitor of their kind. Bahamut was first introduced in the Farunian Pantheon, but he wasn't terribly prominent within it. Usually he's only mentioned in reference to Torm, a dragon-riding god that fills a very similar niche, as a lesser deity serving under him as a subservient deity. Still, even within the Farunian pantheon, Bahamut has a place within human faithful followers and other creatures most dragons would consider lesser races. Dragon worshippers have been praising the great platinum dragon and have been gaining his clerical spells since the days of advanced D&D. Bahamut has never really been one for temples or hallowed ground. Rather, he prefers to be honored through the deeds of his divine servants. Some gold, silver, and brass dragons would still construct shrines to him though, usually just consisting of an image of him, and usually just private enough area so that everyone can meditate and worship him. Bahamut and his followers have some interesting applications for your campaign settings, and the dragon deity can be used in all sorts of ways in your story, especially if one of your players is a Bahamut worshipper. First, any church, knightly order, or clergy of Bahamut can function as a source of quests and potential allied NPCs. Smiting evil and upholding justice falls right in line with most plot lines, and you can easily use them as a plot device to drive your players to their objectives. 
Unless you're running an evil campaign, most Bahamut followers don't make for great antagonists, though the so good they became evil trope can definitely be a fun way to work that into your campaign. Bahamut himself can also make for a memorable NPC, as he has a long history of disguising himself as a wise old man or a callow youth. I wouldn't exactly recommend trying to use Bahamut in an actual combat session for D&D, though. As a deity, he should be able to crush just about anything, but if you absolutely need to involve him in combat somehow, I'd copy the TM at 5e e stats with a few key edits. Start by changing his breath weapon to cold or radiant damage, and cut the multi-head ability and the legendary action that uses it. Among other things you might want to do just for flavor. Bahamut is an attractive deity to follow for both do-gooders and dragon enthusiasts. Arguably the best. His dedication to good lines up well with any character who's a fan of justice, mercy, and honor. Basically, if you could see your character rescuing a cat from a tree, then Bahamut is probably a good fit for you. If your character gains their power from divinity, like a cleric or a paladin, though, there's a bit more to it. What god you worshipped as a cleric used to have a lot more impact regarding divine spells, but in 5th edition, clerics really only need to know what domains a god has for their clerical spells. 5th edition clerics mechanically select the domain, and the god is really more of the fluff surrounding it. Exactly what domains of Bahamut are in 5th edition is a bit hazy since they're not officially listed, but from what we know of in earlier editions and a bit of extrapolation from his character, the life domain, order domain, and war domain should all fit. Arguably, you could also convince the DM that he fits the tempest domain as well. Thematically, it's also useful to know your god's symbol, which for Bahamut is simply a dragon's head in profile. Bahamut's virtues and policies regarding the actual combating of evil seem tailor-made for dragonborn paladin players, but even with their divine powers, 5th edition paladins don't need anything from deities mechanically. In fact, paladins don't even really need to select a god anymore for anything other than fluff and flavor. Rather, they select a sacred oath. For the most part, this oath can be left fairly vague, or it can be something unique to your DM setting. You can also adopt the oath and creed of your god, though, and here Bahamut shines for his human faithful. Knightly followers of Bahamut often follow the Tarian Code, a draconic code of honor created by the gold dragon Terrace, a member of Bahamut's court. Originally, the Terran Code was meant for just Bahamut's court dragons, but it eventually got adopted by knights and other honorable humans, paying homage to Bahamut and other good draconic deities. The major precepts are listed right here, and they all seem to make perfect sense. Beyond Creed, those wishing to do good in Bahamut's name often wear bronze badges, silver badges, or gold badges, bearing a simple image of a dragon's head in profile. I was partially excited to do this episode because I knew that at least a few people out there are hearing most of this lore for the first time, and if you've ever needed something in the universe of D&D to latch your lawful good character to aside from the concept of being a cool guy, stuff like draconic lore can make everything feel like it has much more scope and narrative purpose. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos like this every week. You can also support us on Patreon if you'd like, and you can also go check out these shirts that we're also selling on our website now. And if there's another draconic character or deity or anything else you'd like to hear us talk about here on the show, please let us know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skullsplitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.